everybody welcome to my channel my name is marissa if you don't know we're going to review the mark jacobs remarkable foundation so today this is what i will be using this is the mark jacobs remarkable full coverage this is in shade 54 honey medium and it comes in a little box like this Here's the product. When it comes out, it does come with a little box inside, kind of just like a protective shell, I guess, and then with a little bit of directions. This does come in, what is it, 0.75 fluid ounces, which is 22 milliliters. If you're interested in size, it comes in 26 shades, according to the website. This is sold in Sephora, which is where I got mine. I got it on the VIB Rouge sale. Anyway, so it comes like this. You take off the cap. I am not used to foundations that don't have a pump. I'm usually very comfortable with pumps and do at least a pump and I can get that right on my face. This is a little bit different. So it comes in a little thing like this and a screw top, but it has like a, I, I don't know the word for it. It's like a metal long something. I, I don't know. But it comes like that and typically what you're supposed to do is kind of dot this on the face and then blend it in with like a beauty blender or you can do like a brush. Today I did a beauty blender. Uh, maybe I'll do another one with a brush because I have a couple new things I'd like to try out as well. I'll give you a little demo and I'll show you how I got it done. Testing. All right, let's get started. We're gonna get to the good part. We're going to be reviewing the Marc Jacobs Remark Foundation today, and we'll see how that works with my skin. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is start with eyebrows. I don't usually pluck them or anything. I kind of let them go crazy, and then I shape them how I want to with the pomade. So we're gonna go in with the Anastasia Dip Brow in granite. Oh, and I'm like out. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to see my allergist today. I kind of like to keep them a little bit thick and as natural as possible, but obviously, as you can see there, I suck. It's just the doctor. They're not going to care, but I care. I like to do my makeup kind of in silence. I usually watch TV, whatever's on, you know, I'll check out HBO and all that. And Netflix. Been watching the new American Horror Story. It just finished. I'm so excited. That was so good. I had such chills. I loved it. Now, what am I watching? Manifest. You know that movie or the TV show with the uh, the flight that kind of disappeared for five years? I really like it. So I think the fall finale just happened. I'm a little bit behind, so I'm going to have to catch up on that. Maybe tonight. Maybe tomorrow. We will see. I suck with like live TVs and shows. Like I don't really watch TV like that. When I find shows, like this is the most shows I've really ever had. Usually it's just Jersey Shore and RuPaul. I love RuPaul. RuPaul is a god. The queens, oh, they're so talented. I love them all. Slash Nomi Small is my favorite. Season eight. She's on All Stars this year too. It starts up in about a week or so. I'm really just practicing getting comfortable in front of a camera right now. I have to do my whole makeup anyway, so might as well just do it now. Brows are not my strong point, but I mean, I don't really have much brow, so I have so much room to play around with. So we'll continue on with this brow and try and start at the same spot spot the sides a little bit darker okay a lot bit darker but it looks about the same shape right this one's a lot thicker than this one i don't have the patience to redo it to be honest maybe i can make this one a little bit thicker slash you can totally tell all right well i'm not even a makeup expert this is just a hobby i'm just your everyday girl playing with makeup for fun i just like to brush the inner corners to make it more natural all right i'm gonna make this one thicker somehow i think i'm just gonna add to the top Fun. all right that's as good as we're gonna get i should really practice a little bit better plus this was the pomade so i was a little heavy-handed usually like i'm thinner like i started out over here and then this became a mess so then we just went all out okay next we have eyes i'm a basic and i like max soft ochre paint pot oh my brows look awful i just use like my kat von d number 40 brush and this stuff is great it's like almost like a concealer kind of for me it neutralizes my eyes so it's not as doesn't come out as dark oh i fixed the brow i don't usually get to film in the daytime so this is nice usually i'm at nighttime with like 50 different lights trying to make it look bright in here i mean i don't usually put my makeup on with mirror in my hand i have this big giant full-size mirror in my room and that's what i use whatever this is as good as it's gonna get this is more about the foundation anyway as soon as my eyes are done I grabbed my biggest palette with the biggest mirror, which is my Lorac Pro. So this is what we're gonna use today. I'm gonna do something fairly quick and pretty and easy. 
That way we can get on with the review. Like I said, I'll probably cut most of this out. This is just for practice. All right, so I'm going to go in here and probably take this shade. I'm gonna take butterscotch, use my big, big Real Techniques brush, and of course use my color switch all the time just in case I don't think I used this recently. And throw it in my crease. Yeah, it's a little too light. All right, so since I lied, we're going to take mocha over here. Mocha. And we're gonna throw that in the crease. Oh, that's much better. Did you see how quickly that went on? That's much better. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the Lorac shadows, but they're very, very, very soft. So I try and use as much of that fallout as I can without creating more because the, I mean, these were not cheap. I think this is like $60, but I'm really good at sales. So I probably found it with like a $40, $30 range. That's just me. That's how I shop good at that i get all the sales literally next we're going to take i guess cedar because i like it i like a little i do smoky everything so we're just gonna take a little cedar and throw that right into the crease and blend it good now i'm gonna take honey which is a pretty neutral shade and i'm just gonna throw that on my lid on my inner inner lid now for a girl that usually uses her finger to do these these come out really, really, really nice with the brush. You don't even need Fix Plus, in my opinion. But I like Fix Plus. I like that extra sparkle. Oh, that looks good. Alrighty. Almost done. And then we can get to the foundation because I'm really excited about that. Little to no fallout. Very little to no. Alrighty, and then my next shade, I guess I'll take... There's nothing really dark, which is really sad. I guess Copper Pearl. Probably gonna look the same color to be honest it's a little darker that's fine this will work this one for some reason had a lot of fallout maybe i went a little bit crazy in there but the good thing is we didn't put any type of concealer or anything on yet we didn't even have to powder so this can be wiped right off before i put my foundation on okay that came out pretty good i'm not mad that looks good all right now i'm gonna take pink peony as a highlight shade i'm gonna take this right under my brow bone All right, let's throw some eyeliner on and then we'll get started with the foundation. I'm gonna take Tattoo Liner. This is gonna be hard because I usually use two hands for this. Okay, perfect. Here we go. I think we're finally ready. We're officially ready to begin. On my unboxing, when I first, on when I did my haul, I kind of broke the box. Oops, that's a lot like me. Anyway, it comes just like this in this little packaging. I guess a little bit of directions. Voila. Here's the foundation. This is not a pump, so this kind of confused me, so we'll give this a little bit of a shake. Ooh, it's like light. I can hear it like swish in there. Anyway, I'll put this back in here. I'm not one to save the box, so I'll probably toss that. Maybe I'll keep the directions. Actually, let's read the directions. Whew, this says, for best application, apply one pump of undercover perfecting coconut face primer. Okay, so I don't really use primer. I have really oily skin, so I opt out. Sometimes I do, and if I do, I use the Too Faced Hangover Primer, and I only do it like right here, because I have huge pores there. Sometimes on my nose, maybe I'll do a little extra on my chin, like my T-zone, but I don't like it. It makes me sticky, and I feel like I get oily quicker, so I don't really use primer. Shake Remarkable, using dot applicator, place three to four dots on face. For best results, starts with less and blend before adding more. Here we go, we're gonna unlid this, and this, I think, just spins. Alrighty, so here's the applicator. This is what this looks like. And I guess, let me get my mirror so we can do this. I have my beauty blender, my damp beauty sponge ready. New stuff is exciting, but I don't I don't know why, because this gives me anxiety. I like pumps. So this is new for me. Three to four, so we're gonna do one, two, three, four. Actually, we're gonna do five, and if I'm probably wrong. I'm gonna take the beauty sponge. I like to use the big side first and kind of pounce this in. Oh, that is a really nice color. I don't know if you can tell. It matches my skin very nicely. I was surprised. Okay, I'm going to need more. My beauty sponge is damp, so I wonder if that's a thing. To be honest, when I do my foundation, I don't usually wet supposed to be full coverage too so we're gonna see how this applies so 
So far so good, not having any problems. All right, they keep, they always tell me a little goes a long way, but I'm seeing not really, but maybe it's just because I'm just, watch I did too much now and then I'll regret my decision for making all these marks on my face. Hmm, looks like, hmm. That's completely new to me, so <laughs> I think it's fascinating that it's literally just a little stick in there. Okay, I've already put too much on this side. It did even out and distribute very nicely, very quickly. Probably have to just use a little bit more for my forehead. Other than that, it looks like it's doing really well. All right, for this on my forehead, I'm only going to take like two, three dots. That's it. See how that spread out? I don't know if you can see that, but that spread it out really nicely. Three dots and just mesh it around. Might be a little too light for me, but we can bronze it out. I think we're done. Who else gets makeup in their hair? I'm really good at that. It's a little sticky still. All right, it's a little bit lighter than I would have liked, but this is gonna be fine. I'm going to make it work. It was expensive, so we're gonna make sure I can bronze it out to make it look good. All right, so next step for me, what I like to use is I use Urban Decay. This is the medium neutral concealer. This is the all nighter. It's a little thick for me, but whatever, I don't mind it. Oh, I better close this real tight. That way it doesn't dry out. I've heard some horror stories. Recap it. So I just take this and cover my nasty dark circles because I don't sleep very long. My theory is I'll sleep when I'm dead. Doesn't do well for my dark circles now. And then just take my beauty sponge. I usually like the tip for this one. I do use a Real Technique sponge on occasion and I must say this is a lot softer. I kind of like it a little bit better. But these are $20 each. The Real Technique sponge is like six. <laughs> so you can see where I'm drawn to the Real Technique over the actual Beauty Blender. But you know what? Some things are worth it. I think a Beauty Blender is worth it. I just try not to use it as much because my dog likes to get the sponges and she rips them. And that's why I started doing the Real Technique sponge. Because when she first ruined my Beauty Blender, I wanted to kill her. All right, so I'm going to use my... Real Technique sponge for the powder. And what I like to use is, this is Kat Von D. I do love her products. Her aside, because I don't necessarily agree with what she's doing. Um, and if you guys don't know, she's choosing not to vaccinate her kid, which to be honest, is not really our business, but she did put it out there. So I feel like a lot of people are responding to it and boycotting her products. I get it, but her products are so good, I cannot boycott them. Like. Her stuff's amazing. Oh yeah, before the Marc Jacobs, I usually use the Kat Von D foundation, the thick stuff. I love it. I have the wrong shade. Again, it's way too light. It's lighter than this on me. Hopefully I like this. We'll see how it wears throughout the day. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of powder, just coat the bottom of the sponge. And I definitely go for under my eyes because concealer creases on me. Like I said, I have a lot of wrinkles all of a sudden. I think it's because I rub my eyes, but again, I'm seeing the allergist today, so hopefully that'll kinda, maybe I can get some drops and I won't have this problem anymore. This side, I kinda need two hands to do. I'll probably do this in a viewfinder. It creases where the wrinkles are. It's, it's awful. Don't get old. And I do my chin, I do everywhere I highlighted. Okay, and since I have wrinkles, I like to do my smile lines with this powder first. I think it kinda helps, I could be wrong. And then my terrible, forehead lines. I don't know how that happened or when that happened, but I know I make that face and they're so pronounced. It's so embarrassing. And I like to take a bigger brush, fluffy brush. This is a Morphe brush. I got it last year in a pack of like 15 and originally I think it was like $75. I bought it for $15. And I got my girlfriend a pack of the same ones. She has it in purple. I have it in green. And I just take some of the translucent powder and kind of set my face because I'm super oily. If I don't set my face, it's just tacky and a friggin' mess, to be honest. So I kind of baked a little down here. I'll just knock some of that extra off because we gotta finish the eyes as well. On first feel, feels good. So what I usually like to do here is I like to put a little bit of dry foundation on. This just powders my face a little bit better. After that, I do like to do a little bit of bronzer. My bronzer of choice recently has been Hoola. Just use a little sponge like this from Sephora. 
my dog ate it. As you can tell, she likes to eat my things. She's annoying, but I love her. She's literally right here. Alrighty, here we go. Contour my cheeks a little bit. Watch, I go there and they make me take off all my makeup. I like to contour my nose just a little bit. Although you're probably like, that's a heavy contour. Where are you going? Just the doctor, you know. feel like my chin gets the greasiest and oiliest first. It's awful. I'm gonna take mahogany. I like dark colors. I throw it right under the lash line. I use Kylie Kyle liner and I just put that in my room. For my waterline. Fix that. That was easy. Better not talk too soon because now this eye is getting more thicker eyeliner than this. Let's throw some mascara on. I don't really have time to put on fake ones. I'm in a hurry to go to the doctor. This is Buxom Mascara. I love it. Buxom. I love this stuff. It's like better than sex, but a little less clumpy. And since I haven't been wearing a lot of mascara recently, my lashes are kind of, I don't want to say growing back, but they're a little bit nicer. And as much as I love the better than sex, because it gives you that nice, thick, voluminous look, I think I like to go with this for now. We're gonna do a little under eye. Alrighty, since it's just a day look, I'm going to finish up. Finishing touches, just gonna do a little bit of, this is 1992 Comfort Matte by Urban Decay. No lip liner, that was pretty Gucci. Here we go. Makeup's done. I'm really good at getting foundation in my hair. Anyway, so I think the foundation looks good. It applied fairly easily. I did a bunch of dots and used a beauty blender to kind of pounce it out. I do like that. I compare it to the Kat Von D. It is very lightweight. It does look very full coverage. It did oxidize a bit, so it is matching my skin tone pretty nicely besides my contour and everything. I am not a daily foundation wearer, so I didn't realize that maybe I should have brushed my teeth beforehand. I'll zoom in a little bit. Anyway, so it didn't come off that bad around my face and I do use mouthwash and everything, so looks like it's there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my doctor's appointment and in about four or five hours I will check in and show you how it is. So far right now, pull you a little closer. Like I said, I make that face all the time so I have those prominent wrinkles there. I might just be SOL with those, so it is what it is. But I also have my smile lines I've noticed that I've been getting creased in a little bit more with different foundations. Right now I'm dry, very smooth everywhere. Everything else looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the look we came up with today. And the damn eyebrows, man. I just like got carried away. Believe me, they don't always look like that. I'll see you in a couple hours and I'll check in with you. I'll do two check-ins every four hours and do like a full eight hour wear. I am going to the gym tonight, so it's going to hit just before then. I didn't think it'd be a fair review if I went to the gym and makeup like this. Anyway, so I'll be back and I'll see you shortly. Wish me luck. Hey guys, so it's been about four hours. 4.23, I started about 12.30. Went to the doctor. Everything went on pretty well. So let me zoom you in. Yeah, my eyebrows are atrocious. I made them a little thick, so don't judge me. Anyway, my forehead lines, they look all right. They don't look like any worse than before. See if I have any smile lines. If I do, they're not bad. I'm surprised. Um, I'm a little red here. I did blow my nose a lot. I did go to the allergist, so I picked a horrible day to do a foundation review. But everything else seems to be pretty okay. Maybe a little bit of creasing under the eye. Yeah, a little bit of creasing under the eye, but that might just be my concealer. And I just have natural wrinkles there it's not oily my chin a little but i did just eat i did have quite the day i went to the allergy doctor i had scratch tests done i like not cried but like i had tears because i had to do a lot of stuff with my nose they had to put like um q-tips up my nose that went like all the way back it's gross and yeah i just ate my lipstick off so ignore that but everything else seems to be pretty in place let me see if there's any Now that that's there, my skin looks a little oily. It's not bad. Could be a lot worse. 
I'm surprised it's still on. It's still full coverage. You can't see much scarring. So I should see you in the next couple of hours um, for probably about a little before eight because I do. I think I'm going to go to the gym tonight and I'm not going to put this makeup through a gym test where that's not fair. All right, I'll see you back in a few hours. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, this is my final check-in. It's just, oops, it's just past 7.30. It's all oh, about, been about three hours, but I'm off to the gym. I did take a nap after my allergy doctor. Um, so I think hmm, it's not bad actually. Can't really tell. Did sneeze a lot. I did blow my nose like a lot more as well. So I guess it kind of, that's why it's a little bit right here. And that's perfectly fine. That should have happened. All right, let's see. Let's zoom you in or let's move forward. Just those two lines, man. That's me though. That's not the foundation. Um, it covered my, it's not a mole. It's like a beauty mark. Covered that pretty well. That's just a little scarring. My chin it didn't really hold up, but that's not its fault, I don't think. I eat like a crazy person and just shoveling food real quick. I'm not a very careful eater. Like I should be cutting my bites up into like small pieces and I know that doesn't happen. That's my fault. So I don't really expect that to come off too much. Other than that, it actually still feels dry. Not sticky. My chin's a little sticky. My forehead is not sticky. Nothing else is sticky. Transfer, I mean, not really shiny but not it's not bad it oxidized pretty well so there's not like an obvious difference whatever i'm pretty happy with it i do use the kat von d foundation and that's very thick but it's full cover so it's, i thought it'd be very similar but this is so lightweight people aren't lying when they're saying it's lightweight and i think that's a good thing but i'm not experiencing any cracking or anything like that it doesn't feel over dry or anything so i like it my face only gets oily and sticky in my t-zone area whatever anyway Thank you for watching this video. Hit that like button, subscribe, leave me a comment. We're going to do another review on this and we're going to try and use a little bit of primer. See if that can fix my T-zone area and my sticky spots. And I am not a big believer of using that whole line of product. I'm just your everyday consumer. I don't want to have to buy their makeup brush for this. I don't want to have to buy their primer for this. I don't, you know, I don't want to have to buy their powder and I don't want to have to buy too much just to make this work. But I will go off on theory, maybe I'll run to the Sephora and get a little sample of their primer and see if that makes any difference. That might be fun. I have a ton of other foundations and other stuff for review as well. I have a lot of fun stuff to unbox and unpack for you. We have a lot coming up for you. Like, subscribe, let me know, follow me on my Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Bye, see you next time.